Now to North Korea. I don't remember the last time they made news for something positive. Not even the Wuhan virus. For the longest time, they said they had no positive cases. Now North Korea has become a serial missile launcher. If it was an attention-seeking tactic, it's not really delivering. It got sort of repetitive and boring. So Kim Jong-un has come up with something new. How about something that can trigger a nuclear tsunami? Pyongyang claims to have tested such a weapon an underwater drone that can unleash a nuclear tsunami. North Korea says the drone can destroy an entire naval strike group and port. So what is this beast that North Korea has tested and should the world be worried about it? Here's a report. North Korea has tested a new weapon, a nuclear-capable underwater drone, a drone that can cause a radioactive tsunami. This is from when the drone hit its underground target. North Korea says this explosion could be nuclear too. The state-run Korean Central News Agency called the drone an unmanned underwater nuclear attack craft, or HAIL. The underwater craft cruised through North Korea's eastern coast for at least 59 hours before it detonated. The North Korean media, bombastic as it always is, said this. The mission of the underwater nuclear strategic weapon is to stealthily infiltrate into operational waters and make a super-scale radioactive tsunami through underwater explosion to destroy naval striker groups and major operational ports of the enemy. It added that the weapon has been in development since 2012 and that it has already undergone more than 50 tests just in the past two years. It's hard to verify these claims, but it's best to err on the side of caution. Pyongyang claims it has the capacity to level entire naval strike groups and that the drone can be carried on ships, not necessarily military-grade naval ships. It can be transported on modified merchant ships as well. Why is Kim Jong-un doing all this, the missile launches and the drone tests? to send a message to the United States, South Korea and Japan that it can launch a nuclear attack in multiple ways. It has tested several platforms to launch nuclear weapons. Underground silos, submarines, rail cars, mobile missile launchers that can be moved on roads and now underwater drones. North Korea isn't the first country to test such a weapon. Russia is part of this club too. Russia produced the first set of Poseidon nuclear-capable super torpedoes in January this year. And the features bear an eerie resemblance to North Korea's nuclear tsunami drones. These weapons can create radioactive waves, destroying everything in their path. North Korea also claims to have launched several cruise missiles on Wednesday, taking the total number to more than 17 in the last three months. It's demonstrating its ability to carry out tactical nuclear strikes if a war breaks out. The tests are timed to match joint drills by the US and South Korea. They're calling the exercise Freedom Shield. It's their largest exercise in five years. North Korea is spooked and preparing for war. It's enrolling millions of soldiers as volunteers and firing all sorts of weapons to flex its muscle. exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony.
the US and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting. exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defence minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting. 